Hey, Bayshore students, uh, so glad that you've joined us on video tonight. Uh, we sure do miss being with you. Dana and I are praying for you and your family this week and the days ahead. Uh, we can't wait to be back together, uh, to fellowship with you, to study God's Word in person together. But we're so thankful for technology and the opportunity we have to still to be able to connect in this way. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, grab that, grab a piece of paper and a pen. We'd love for you to be taking some notes during this time, journaling some as, as God speaks to us. Uh, but let's start off with a word of prayer. God, thank you for your love for us. Uh, we are just so thankful, Lord, for your faithfulness and your goodness in our lives. Uh, God, with all the uncertainty and the unusual circumstances we find ourselves in, uh, we're just thankful that you are in control of all things. God, I thank you that even though we cannot meet together tonight, that we are still able to gather. And God, that you are big enough that you are meeting with each one of us uh, as we watch this video. I pray that as we go through your word, as we read and discuss your word, that you would speak to us, that you would work in our hearts and our lives. And God, that you would just use us for your name and for your kingdom. God, we thank you that your word is alive and active. And as your word speaks tonight, may we be obedient to do what you've asked us to do. Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we continue through our series called Pieces, uh, What to Do When Everything Falls Apart, we went through the book of Ruth, and now we're in Job. The other week, we studied Job 1, and we saw that Job struggled to understand exactly why God had allowed him to suffer. He experienced the loss of his kids, his possessions, and even his health. And even though Job maintained and told others that he had not sinned in order to bring about the judgment of God, Job still felt like he was experiencing separation in his fellowship with God. And so, so far in chapter one, the other week, we learned that Job loved the Lord and he followed all of his commands. Even though Job was obedient and loved God, he still experienced suffering. Job was a very wealthy man, but he lost everything. He had lost his family his livelihood, and his health. He was living with emotional grief and financial distress and physical suffering. His suffering was so great that we see in the chapters following up and leading up to chapter 23 that his friends come and they question his loyalty and obedience to God and say that this was the reason that Job had suffered. But we see in these chapters that Job repeatedly shares that he was searching for God and his presence and God's comfort seemed to elude him during this time while he was suffering. Job desired to meet with God so that he might present his situation to God and he trusted that God would listen and God would answer him. Even in the midst of Job's suffering and in spite of his doubt, Job continued to trust God's power and his sovereignty during the difficulties he was facing. In the same way, we need to understand uh, that we, what we are going through in our own times right now with COVID-19 uh, and all the uncertainty and the unusual circumstances we find ourselves in, uh, that we can still trust God because He is good and He is faithful and that He is in control of everything, even when circumstances appear to be out of control. And so as we dive into chapter 23 of Job tonight, I encourage you to open up your Bibles, read along with me. Uh, but I've titled this message, No Glimpse of God. And so like Job, have you ever questioned where God was when difficult things happened? Have you ever felt alone when you went through a hard time? Or have you ever wondered if God really cares for you? So we're going to answer these questions and look into Scripture and look at Job's life. Uh, and see, what do we do when we question what God is doing? And so in chapter 23, after Job's friends had accused him of wrongdoing, look back at the previous chapters, uh, Job wanted to take his questions about what was happening in his life before God Almighty himself. And so Job replies to his words from Job 22, but he did not respond to his charges. This is typical of Job's words throughout the course of the book. Uh, Job's perspective was so vastly different from that of his friends that they seemingly talk past each other. Uh, but let's take a look here in the first four verses of Job chapter 23. Then Job spoke again, My complaint today is still a bitter one, and I try hard not to groan aloud. If only I knew where to find God, I would go to his court. 
I would lay out my case and present my arguments. And the first thing we see here in this passage is that God wants us to take our questions to him. If you were taking notes, write that down. God wants us to take our questions to him. Have you ever experienced hardship or suffering and wonder where God was in the middle of it? Take a look at these four verses and let's see how we know and understand that Job was disappointed. He was discouraged in what he brings to God. Look at these words. In verse 2, we see the words complaint and bitter and groan aloud. In verse 3, we see him say, if I only knew where to find God. That's evidence of his discouragement and his defeat. And then in verse 4, he talks about bringing his argument and his case before the Lord. But here's the thing. In spite of him feeling alone and feeling abandoned, Job still cries out to God. And he's the only one he turns to because he trusts God to help him. And in the midst of suffering and confusion and even personal loss and disappointment, it is okay for us to take our questions to God, and we can trust God with our questions. Let's continue reading in verse 5. Then I would listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. Would he use his great power to argue with me? No, he would give me a fair hearing. Honest people can reason with him, so I would be forever acquitted by my judge. So if Job received his desired time with God, he was certain that God would see the undeserved injustice and that Job had suffered and God would be forced to respond to him. In his present situation, Job felt like God was ignoring him. But there in verses 6 through 7, we see that Job's faith assured him that if he were able to voice his argument before God, that God would hear him and would certainly not take advantage of him. This assurance that Job had was rooted in his unshakable belief and faith in God's power and and his greatness. And that reminds us of the second point, that when we take our questions to God, we must have a humble heart and a teachable spirit. That when we take our questions to God, we must have a humble heart and a teachable spirit. There's a few things I think of about this when we talk about having a humble heart and a teachable spirit. First, we've got to recognize who God is. We got to know that he is the God of the universe. He is almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-sufficient God. And so that humbles us as we come before him. And secondly, not only do we recognize God, but we realize who we are, that we are his creation, that we are his children, and that we can trust him because he knows what is best. Also, with having a humble heart and a teachable spirit, we must be reflective we must allow God to examine our own hearts. We must ask him to test us and to look at our hearts and to show us those ways that we have been disobedient to him or unfaithful to him. Not only asking him to show us and to be reflective of our own lives, but we must be receptive. That when we ask God to examine, we must be willing to listen and to receive what he tells us. That may be encouragement. It may be conviction. But we must listen to God. We must trust him with what he reveals to us. And then in those areas where he convicts us, we must be willing to confess our sins before him and ask for his forgiveness. But also not just re being reflective and receptive, but also along with confession, we need to be repentant. That we need to say the same thing about our sin that God says. That we must be broken over the sin and the disobedience in our lives and ask for God to forgive us and for his grace to fill us that we would be more and more obedient to him as he works in our lives. And last, with having a humble heart and a teachable spirit, it means we've got to be obedient. That when God speaks to us and we come before the Lord and we want to be taught by him, we want him to work in our lives, we must be willing to be obedient. As we continue in Job 23 and verses 8 and 9, he says, I go east, but he is not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see God in the north, for he is hidden. I look to the south, but he is concealed. And so just taking a look at those words of um, the north and the east and the west and the south, that he is looking uh, everywhere, that no matter where Job looks, in any direction, he was unable to find God. And he had searched everywhere and was not successful in finding God. Uh, if you've ever come home from school, and maybe you're supposed to meet your mom or your dad or a sibling uh, there. 
and no one was there, what would you do? You'd look for them, right? Uh, you'd search the house, you'd check uh, the driveway for their car, um, you'd call their cell phone, you'd text them, you'd reach out, you'd check with other friends. You may even begin to worry. So how would you feel if no matter how hard you looked, you still couldn't find your mom or your brother or sister? Or you couldn't even reach them. You couldn't even find any information about them or where they were. You may feel scared or alone or lost or worried or abandoned. And Job felt the same way. He felt alone. He felt abandoned in his suffering because he could not find God's presence or even hear his voice. Job was saddened over the fact that it felt like God had hidden himself from him. But the reality is, is that God was right there with him. Despite all of Job's difficulties and his hardships, Job's discouragement came from him feeling like he had lost fellowship with God. But here's the promise and the truth we've got to remember. Write this down. Even when we can't find God, God knows right where we are and is right there with us. Even when we can't find God, God knows right where we are and is right there with us. I think about me and my girl, Sadie and Josie, and I think about the layout of our house. I love to try to uh, play hide and seek with them, even when it's not an official game. The layout of our house um, is kind of open, and so there's kind of a, a pathway that goes from our kitchen to our den, and you can kind of go circles. There's a wall that separates the two rooms, and so it's really easy to try to hide, and you can run circles around there and try to not even realize the person's even in the house if you're really quiet. And so it's really fun sometimes when the girls are looking for me, I'll kind of hide behind the wall and I'll just kind of follow uh, and mirror myself around the wall so that they can't see and know that I'm in the house. But the reality is, is that I always end up being found by them. And some of that is just the greatest part of being a dad is that moment when the girls realize that I was there all along and just the joy and the excitement of that connection uh, brings joy to my heart. And I think about the Lord that when we see God and when we hear from him and we realize that he was always there and we embrace him and we trust him more, uh, what delight that brings to God's heart. Let's read and see what Job says in verse 10. He says, but God knows where I'm going. And when God tests me, I'll come out as pure as gold. So you see, when we face hardships, we can experience feelings of loneliness and isolation. But because of God's love for us, we can hold on to the truth that we are not alone. We have not been deserted, and we are still firmly in God's presence. God hears us, He knows where we are, and He knows everything that we're experiencing, even when we may not think that He can. But in verse 10, we also see another truth, that when we face trials, God desires to refine us. When we face trials, God desires to refine us. We see God, uh, the comfort that Job had here, that even though Job questioned where God was, God knew Job's situation. And this brought Job a tremendous amount of comfort and peace. He said, when God has tested me, I will come forth as gold. That word test refers to the process of refining metal, and in this case, refers to gold. And to refine gold, a craftsman would sit by a fire when the temperature would reach temperatures of up to 132 degrees Fahrenheit. I can't even imagine how hot that is. The gold would then be placed in a type of bowl, and all the impurities would rise to the top as the gold was heated. All the impurities would rise to the top so they could be removed, leaving behind pure gold that would have very little or even no impurities. And Graham Lotz says that the kind of trust that God wants us to, to have cannot be learned in comfort and ease. The kind of trust that God wants us to have cannot be learned in comfort and ease. In everything that Job had been tested, in every way that he had been tested, he may have felt as though God was putting him through the fire. However, Job stood confident that in the end he would come forth pure in his faith and that he would be refined just as gold. And so here's some things as we look at uh, verse 11 and 12, some things we need to consider if we're going to allow God to refine us. Read with me. For I have stayed on God's paths. I have followed his ways and not turned aside. I have not departed from his commands, but I have treasured his words more than daily food. 
Job believed in his God, and though he didn't understand why God allowed him to suffer, he remained committed to God and his ways. The first thing about being refined and allowing God to refine us is that we need to remain obedient to God. He says that I have stayed on God's path. He knew God's will, he knew God's commands, and he was willing to be obedient to God. Second, we see that he turned, that we must turn to God and trust him. He said, I followed his ways and not turned aside. There are so many things in our lives that we can turn to when we are faced with hardships or difficulty or when we have fear or worry or concerns. But God wants us to turn to him and to not turn to anything else. And that by turning to him, that we are letting him know that we trust him because he is God and he is control of all things. There in verse 12, he talks about treasuring God's word. If we're going to be refined, we must treasure God's word. We must delight in God's word. We must bow ourselves and humble ourselves before him and his word. He says that he treasured God's word more than food, that we would look to God's word and that we would seek uh, provision and sustenance from his word every day, that we would realize our need for him and his word and his truth, that we would need him to speak into our lives every day, that we would meditate on his word, that we would apply his word to our lives, that we would obey his word, that in everything we do, our lives would be marked by the truth of his scripture and his word. And last, we see that to be refined by the Lord, we need to rely fully on God. We need to rely on him, that Job remained faithful to God even in his suffering. And Job continued to say that he was blameless and had never turned away from God, and he would trust God. And last, we see that even when everything seems out of control, God is still in control. Even when everything seems out of control, God is still in control. Read with me in verse 13. But once God has made his decision, who can change his mind? Whatever he wants to do, he does. So he will do to me whatever he has planned. He controls my destiny. No wonder I am so terrified in his presence. When I think of it, terror grips me. God has made me sick at heart. The Almighty has terrified me. Darkness is all around me. Thick, impenetrable darkness is everywhere. Here, Job turns his attention to the unchanging character of God. Job realized that God is the one true God. God is all-knowing and all-powerful. God already knew everything that Jacob had experienced and was experiencing and would experience. And the same is true of our lives. Job knew that God was sovereign. Since God created everything and possesses authority over all creation, God governs the universe by his own decree. While trusting in God's sovereignty is easier when things go our way, continuing to trust him when experiencing difficulties or struggles can often cause us to doubt. But we know that God is in control of all things. When Job came to this realization, he sat in awe of God. Because Job was humbled before God and humbled by his sovereignty and his majesty, he trusted in God and he was silenced because of God's goodness and God's faithfulness. Without exception, each one of us are going to endure hardship and even suffering God is teaching us what we should do when things get difficult and what we should do when we wonder what God is doing. And in this chapter, we see how a man who loved and obeyed God handled his suffering. Job never really doubted what God was doing, but he did question where God was in the middle of his suffering. Job came to the conclusion that it didn't matter where God was. Job trusted that God knew where Job was. And so he put his trust in God, regardless of his circumstances. And we too can trust that God knows where we are and he knows what we're facing. And we can find great comfort and peace by placing our trust in him, knowing that he is in control of all things. And so whatever our situation, we must remember that God knows us and he knows our hurts and our pains. He knows our worries and our concerns. God is working in our lives and he's working through our circumstances. The situation that we may go through may not be how we, have cho- how we may have chosen for it to be, but we can be comforted knowing that God is in control. These verses record a turning point for Job because Job recognized God's love for him 
Job surrendered control of his hurt and his suffering to God, and he trusted God with it. How difficult is it for you to surrender control of your suffering and your hardships and your difficulties over to God? What do you need to do tonight or this week in order to give up control of these different situations and doubt in your life? I pray that as we remember that God is in control of all things and that he is good in all that he does, that we will trust him more. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for the reminder that you are in control of all things. And God, there is so much going on in our lives right now. There is so much going on in our country and throughout the world. And God, even with unusual times, even with uncertainty, God, I thank you that we can be certain of your faithfulness. We can trust in your unchanging character. And God, that we can be comforted that you are in control of all things. I pray tonight and in the days ahead that you would just give us your comfort and your peace, that we would know your nearness to us, that we would allow you to minister to us and care for us, and God, that we uh, would grow in our faith, that we would be refined by you, that we would obey you, that we would trust you, and that we would submit our lives to you, Father. I thank you for our students once again and for their families. I pray that you uh, would just do a mighty work in their lives and through their families, that you would do a great work for your kingdom. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey guys, before you go, uh, check out below. There's an outline of tonight's lesson that you can have if you missed a few of the points. Uh, also, parents, there's a family devotion section with some questions below for you to have some continued conversations as a family. Uh, but know that Dana and I love you guys. We're praying for you today and in the days ahead. If there's anything you need or any needs that you know of, please feel free to reach out to us and let us know. We are so thankful for you guys. We're thankful for our church family and just how God has brought us together to do whatever it takes to lead students and adults and families to believe in Jesus and to belong to God's family and to become who God's created them to be. I believe in these days ahead that there is a great impact in the world that's gonna happen as we trust Jesus, as we follow him, as we tell people about him, that God is gonna make an impact for Jesus. And we're so excited to be a part of that together. We love you guys and we're praying for you. Have a great night.